Hi there, Perfected the Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. It's guitar setup time once again and in this video I'm going to do it with the help from our friends at Music Nomad. I am in the middle of modifying and upgrading my cheap beginner electric guitar from Glary and I've already installed the parts that it needs and at this point the next thing that I need to do is to give the guitar a playability setup. Now the main difference from the previous setup video that featured this guitar is that I will be using the proper tools courtesy of Music Nomad Equipment Care. These three cases right here contains all the tools that you'll ever need to perform a guitar setup. Now the blue case contains a bunch of tools from screw and allen bits to this neat little knob puller to this multi-wrench that will fit pretty much every kind of nut used on an electric guitar. Now the black case contains every kind of truss rod tool you'll ever need from the hex wrenches to these truss rod sockets. And finally, this zip up case contains all the gauges you'll need to measure and tweak the playability of your instrument. From this string action and pickup height gauge to guitar specific feeler gauges, this one measures your truss rod relief and this one measures your nut height. And then there's also a couple of radius gauges for your string and fretboard radius. And finally, the most important part of this kit is this handy little booklet, which details the Keep It Simple setup or the KISS method by Music Nomad. This booklet contains the workflow as well as detailed instructions on how to use the gauges and the tools so that you can perform a proper guitar setup all by yourself. And if you prefer video instruction over this tiny little booklet, the Music Nomad YouTube channel has tons of guitar specific set of videos that you can check out. Now, depending on when you're watching this, the full modification and upgrade video featuring this guitar may already be out. So I will put a link to it in the end screen so that you guys can watch that next. In it, you'll get all the details of the upgrade and modification process as well as proper sound clips. So enjoy. Okay, here we go. I am going to switch to my body cam so that you will get a first person perspective of everything that I'm going to do. Okay, very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take care of this mess right here. I'm going to take my Music Nomad string cutter and just clip the strings so that everything is nice and neat. I also don't want to poke my eye out accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so according to the workflow, since I have already done the pre-setup steps, the first thing on the agenda is the truss rod. What we will need is the first fret pick capo and our truss rod gauge. Okay, so these have three of the popular truss rod relief uh, measurements already. One for electric guitar, another for acoustic or bass guitar, and the last one is for classical guitar. Now if you want more or less relief depending on the guitar you want, you can choose any one of these. So let's say on your electric guitar you want more relief than usual, then feel free to use either of the other uh, gauges. For this one I'm just going to use the electric guitar gauge which is six thousandths of an inch or 0.15 millimeters. Okay, so the way to use this is to stick it under the fifth string and then line it up with the first fret. And that will press the sixth string down at the first fret. And then we're going to put the guitar in playing position. Now from here, we are going to press down on the 12th fret and slip the gauge under the string, but over the sixth fret and check the truss rod relief that way. Now, if the gauge does not touch the underside of the string, that means there's too much relief and you need to tighten the truss rod. Now on the opposite end, if the gauge does not slip easily under the string, or if you can't get it under at all, then that means the truss rod is too tight and you need to loosen it. Now we only need to check under the sixth string because we assume that the neck has no issues at all. Now, if the neck is warped or it twisted, then no amount of truss rod adjustment will help you. And that needs to be taken care of in a different fashion. 
Okay, I think this is a little tight, so I am going to loosen the truss rod just a touch. Allen wrench. This one will work. From the previous truss rod video that I made, a lot of you are confused as to which way to turn the truss rod. So again, it turns like a regular screw. Clockwise tightens it, counterclockwise loosens it. Though I can see how it can get confusing because you don't know from which way to face the screw. Now, on the truss rod at the headstock, you have to face it head on from the top of the headstock. So the screw tightens to the right and it loosens to the left. Now, if your truss rod is at the bottom of the neck, same thing applies. So you have to face the screw head. And again, righty tidy, lefty loosey. And I am going to loosen it just a little bit. Again, we don't need to move in big increments, just tiny little movements. Okay. Check it again. Okay, that's a little better. So after adjustment, play the guitar a little bit and see how the strings feel against the fretboard. Okay, out of tune, but we will take care of that a little later on. Okay, next. Okay, now we're going to adjust the string action or the string height. Okay, so we still need the pick capo in the previous position. And then we're gonna take our string action gauge and see where we're at. I am looking for the line to be visible under the string. So let's see. I think it is right around 1.75 almost two, let's say 175. And we have this handy little chart here as well. The typical measurements for low action, low medium, medium high, and so on. So right now we are at a medium high action. Now previously when I used to adjust my string action, I would just blindly tweak the saddle height adjustment screws and you know set them to where it feels comfortable. But now that I have these gauges, we can be a little bit more precise. Now earlier with the strings off, I used these gauges to find out what the fretboard radius is. Now one cool thing about these gauges is that they are black. So when you put them against the fretboard, you can instantly see whether you're at the correct radius or not. If you're at the smaller radius, the light shows towards the middle of the gauge. And if you're at the bigger radius, then the light shows up at the opposite ends. And when you get to the correct radius, you can see the light is even all throughout. So this guitar has a 15 inch radius. Now let's take the appropriate Allen bit from the blue tool case. And I think that is a, yeah, that's a 1.5 millimeter hex. Now I'm just going to use this as is because I don't need a lot of leverage to move these screws. Okay, I think that is it. That's proud 1.5 and you can barely see 1.75. Now let's move on to the first string. We have to set the action for that as well. Now, I don't know if you can see it because it's tiny on camera, but it looks like proud one millimeter and barely 1.25. So it's in between those two measurements. And for the high E, that is low to low medium. Mm. I think I want it medium, so I'm going to raise it. I have set the action for the outer E strings, okay, for the first string E and the sixth string E. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the radius gauge and take a measurement, and then I am going to adjust the other strings so that they follow the fretboard radius. Now I realize this is a little difficult for you guys to see, but uh, just, you know, trust me on this. I know what I'm doing, kinda. Okay. I like that. 
me nice medium action that way I can beat on the guitar. Now I get a lot of questions in the comments regarding string action, what string action they should go for. And that is always dependent on your playing style. So if you're like me and you tend to beat on your guitar with a strong attack and heavy handed attack, then you need your action to be medium at least. That way you have a nice clean tone whenever you play. Because low action needs a light touch. So if you pick hard, then you will definitely, you know, fret the string out or get a lot of string buzz. I love these cases. <laughs> it's so easy to be organized, especially if you have a small workbench like mine. Okay, let's check the nut height. Okay, and we don't need this anymore. We need this one. Now, even if you don't have the booklet handy, the gauges themselves have instructions on how to use them. So that is very cool. Okay, so we use this pretty much the same way as the truss rod relief tool. So with the strings in tune, we're going to slip this under the sixth string at the first fret and check for clearances. It just touches the underside of the first string and the top of the first fret. So that tells me that this is a good nut height. I used a pre-slotted brass nut and I guess I managed to set it into that nut slot pretty well. Now let's check the first string. Where's that gauge? Let's see, D, G guitar, B high E guitar. Okay, uh, same thing. I got lucky. Okay, and of course, proof is in how it feels and it doesn't feel too hard to press. Okay, so bar chords are comfortable. Okay, I lucked out because otherwise we'd have to either uh, tweak the bottom of the nut slot or file the string slots on the nut itself. Okay, on the next page is how to use the Music Nomad nut files. Now at the time of this video, I still don't have my own set of these nut files. So when I get my hands on them, I'll probably put together uh, a fun video, maybe, uh, you know, make a guitar nut from a soup bone or something. Now that's gonna be interesting. Let's see, where are we at in the workflow? We have done truss rod, action strings, radius of the strings, nut height. We are now at the intonation. Now to set the intonation, we have to adjust the fore and aft positions of the bridge saddles. Now, as you can see, these saddles are just straight. So meaning that is definitely not intonated. And when you don't have the intonation set, your guitar will play in tune on some parts of the neck and out of tune on other parts. So if you're in tune in the lower frets, chances are you are out of tune in the higher frets. So we have to set that. Okay, we're going to need this. We're going to need this. Stick this in here. And we're going to need the appropriate Phillips head screw. Now it's important to use the appropriate sized bit so that you don't strip out your Phillips head screws. Okay, this works. Okay, to set intonation, I usually get it in the ballpark with the guitar lying down on the bench. And then I'm going to switch to the playing position to fine tune it. Now, since this bridge has Telecaster barrel type saddles, we only have to deal with three adjustment screws. And these Wilkinson brass saddles are already compensated. So it's not going to be as accurate as individual string saddles, but we will do our best. So first thing you need to do is to tune the guitar on the fretted notes. And the way I approach it is that I use the fore and aft position of the saddle to tune the harmonic. So right now the fretted note is on the money and the harmonic is sharp. So I need to lower the pitch of the harmonic and the way to do that is to move the saddle forward. If you need to raise the pitch of the harmonic, you need to move the saddle back. Okay, so. And this is kind of a tedious process, but if you do this enough times, you'll 
get a feel for how far you need to eyeball the uh, saddle positions to get the correct pitch. Okay, that's close enough. And since this one screw also adjusts the second string, we're just going to have to keep our fingers crossed and hope that the Wilkinson compensation is correct. It's very close, so I will take that. I'm going to do the other strings and uh, yeah, time-lapse mode. Okay, fine tune. Okay, that is close enough. We'll call that good. We still need this, we won't need B anymore. Put away, we won't need the pick anymore. Okay, make sure we don't lose any bits. Put it back. Okay, we're still going to need this. And yeah, keep that open. Okay, what is next on the agenda? Just the pickup height. Telecaster, 332 bridge pickup, 1 16th neck pickup. So Telecaster neck pickup needs to be 1 16th. And we need to raise that. Okay, that works. Okay, that works, and then Bridge pickup needs to be 3.30 seconds, so 0.9. Okay. Okay, what's next? Pickup height, other helpful info. Oh, I guess we're at the end of our booklet. Okay, time to plug it in and let's see how it sounds. Okay, here it is, all set up and ready to play. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, let's put some dirt on. Okay, there you have it. That is how to perform a guitar setup using the Music Nomad Keep It Simple Setup Kit. To find out more about Music Nomad and their entire line of musical instrument care products, go to their website, musicnomadcare.com. And if you want to get your own Keep It Simple Setup Kit, please consider buying from my affiliate links in the video description. Buying from these links are of no extra cost to you, and the small commission that I get helps me keep making these videos for everybody to enjoy. In the Philippines, Music Nomad is available from Guitar Pusher, and here in the US, you can get it from either Sweetwater or Amazon. 
Now, if you dug this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and don't forget to ring that bell. And let me know what you think in the comment section. I read everything. Okay, I'm gonna keep on playing this newly set up guitar and break it in, cause you know the drill. Practice makes perfecto. Cheers, guys. Ah.